August 12, 2020. I'm Kimberly Jolly from Fat Quarter Shop Floss Tube, and today we're gonna celebrate World of Cross Stitch Day, which is super exciting. We put together this PDF, it's a low price PDF, and we're just gonna stitch today. I'm just gonna sit and stitch, and you can purchase the PDF and then stitch with me, and you can ask questions. And um, it's called Happiness is Homemade, and so I'm just gonna kinda jump right in so that I can actually have enough time to finish it. We did a video on how to finish a cross stitch in a hoop. And so this is how we finish the back of it. So when you're done finish, when you're done stitching it today, you can go watch our video, subscribe to our channel and you can make one for yourself. So we're just gonna get started and I'm just gonna do this just like I would at home. So I have my pattern, I have my cross stitch journal. You can see it's pretty beat up and dirty. Um, but I have been using it for like two years. The very first thing I do before I do anything is I fill up my journal. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. And the reason I do that is if I need to know what I did or if there's a color I really like and something that I made previously, I can just find it and I keep all my books together when they're done. So I just... Um, do this. Let's see. I'm going to stitch today on 14 count aqua. And I do put the SKU number down. And the reason I do that is if I need to buy more, I'll remember and I can just search on Fat Quarter Shop the SKU number and I'll make it easy. I'm stitching on 14 count. Oops. My stitch count is 66 by 70 and um, it comes out about four and three quarters by five. So today I'm going to start with a 10 inch piece um, because that gives me just a little bit of a border. You can, do a, you can do a 12 inch piece and you will have more, more um, room, it's up to you. And then what I will do is, on my phone, you guys have asked about this a lot. I have this time tracker right here. It's just called time tracker. I just click on it, oh, um, and I just hit start. And so that is my time tracker and that will keep track of how long I've taken. So I'm gonna set this aside now. And I am going to, like I said, um, I left it, it's five by five about, so that's gonna give me about two and a half inches all the way around. If you want more, then you can do a bigger piece. And I'm gonna take my floss flowers. I keep all of my DMC on floss flowers. And so I'm gonna show you how I wind these real quick. I do it at the very beginning. And I'll try to do it fast. So I use these little numbers and I have a ton of these packs, but I'm just showing you how it looks new. And this is how I do all of mine. And so I just have one, um, you don't have to rebuy these, you just use it once. And normally I would just go to my thread cabinet and kind of pull what I don't have. I mean, pull what I already have so I don't have to wind anything, but y'all have asked questions before on how I do my thread. So I'm just gonna kind of do it. And then y'all just let me know if y'all have questions. Um, my big thing here is I'm gonna unwind it as neatly as I can and cut it into eight strands. And then I'm gonna put all but one strand on. And this way it makes it where I can travel. And of course you don't have to do it the way that I do it. I just, um, this is just kind of what I do. I have like a little system. So I just find the ends. So now I will do it until I have eight strands. So then I will clip both ends. I'm going to pull one out. I'm going to wind all of this on the floss flower except for one. 
and the floss flowers are really thick so you can wind it pretty tight and then I usually just tuck it in with my scissors in the back and then I will loop one on the top so when it's ready to do that color I can just pull one off the top and then it keeps all the rest out of my way and untangled so I'm gonna wind the next three just like that and y'all can start asking questions um, All right, we had a sweet, funny comment from April Jackson. They said, well, there is a perk to not being able to sleep. Finally catching y'all live. Ha Hi, Fat Quarter Shop team from Japan. Oh, wow. That's really cool. That is. That's, all, that's so far away. <laughs> and then we had a question from Catherine Lightfoot. When does the Halloween stitch along start? In October. Yes. So the first for, Friday in first October. Friday. I don't know the date off the top of my head, but um, mm -hmm. I think it is the second, yeah, of October. And question from Linda Friend: How many pages are in the journal? I believe it is fifty-six. No, okay. So it will hold fifty projects. Okay. So I can, um, and then you have some extra pages at the end for inventory of thread and your notes. Um, so yeah, I think Lily's right. It's just 50 projects. 50 projects, But yeah. that many pages, yeah. Okay, uh, and then a uh, fun comment from Jennifer Jungles. They say, my kids started school today. Youngest is in kindergarten. Middle is in third grade. Oldest, seventh grade. So weird watching in the quiet for once. <laughs> oh, gosh, That's yes. Funny. I can relate to that. All right, and we don't have any more questions right now, so feel free to ask uh, your questions, guys. Yeah, I'm gonna. I'm kind of timing to see like how long it takes me to make this because I have no a lot, no idea how long it's gonna take me, and I feel like I'm gonna get all nervous. And oh no, mess it up. But yeah, if I um, I probably have all of these colors already on floss flowers at home, but I get so many questions on how I do my floss, so that we Lily will have something now she can refer to, mm -hmm. and I do eight. I feel like that's a good amount, and that basically is about one yard. They're about one yard pieces. Uh, Brendamar Jimenez was asking, where can we buy the floss flowers? At Fat Quarter Shop. So everything I'm using in the video today is in the links. And these are Lori Holt floss flowers and they're pretty thick. Um, they don't bend. So you can kind of, that's what I like about them is I can just kind of throw them wherever. And I don't have to worry about them breaking, I guess. Okay. And from Cross STX4, what color of white floss would you recommend to use on white 14 count Ada? It's for a small project I'm doing, only using two colors, and the other color is DMC 3752. Um, I think 3865 is brighter. So it would show up more. White would blend in. B5200. Oh, sorry. B5200 is the brighter one. 3765 is creamier, and then white is just pure white. So I would actually put all two of those two skeins on top of your fabric and see. And I have started several projects where I think, oh, this is the best white, and then I stitch it and it does not look good. So just be open to change if you start stitching it and you don't like it. Just change it. That's kind of the ultimate test. Is sometimes when you stitch on something, you think, oh, it's gonna look great. And then you're like, what was I thinking when I picked that floss? <laughs> uh, Bex from Texas says, how many ply are we stitching with? How many what? I I'm gonna strands. stitch with two strands. And I'm going to show you, right after I get this green going, I'm going to stitch with two strands on 14 count, and I do the loop method. So I'll show you that in a second. And from Angela Stoutinger, what length floss do you use when stitching? So they're eight, these are eight, this is an eight yard skein. I cut them in eight yard sections, so they're about a yard. Some people like it a lot longer. I prefer it a little bit shorter.
I put this one on the wrong Ooh. on the wrong skein. And uh, a few people are wondering how you store your floss flowers afterwards. So we have a video, um, and it was filmed in May, and it shows my studio and how I store all my floss. So maybe we can link to that. But yes, I have a little cabinet. It was like $200 or less. I bought it at Hobby Lobby, and I got the little white containers that go in it at Michael's and I keep all my skeins in there and then um, on top of my skeins I put my floss flowers and I have a spreadsheet of everything um, because I don't like to waste so to me this is kind of wasteful because I'm starting off with skeins that I probably already have mm. but I'm just doing it so that um, I can answer your questions. Also on this next one uh, people are asking if you could go a little slower with how you loop uh, the floss on the small hole. Yeah. But now I have a knot. Oh no. A sweet comment from Linda Ross Miller Merch. Learning so much from you. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks Ooh, the knot came out. Yay. Yeah, sometimes you get these skeins and they're just like a bundle of mess. But I actually like this part. Um, I think it's. I think it's fun to like play with the floss. Mm -hmm. But I don't have a cat to to like swat at me. But this one, you can see, it's like all <laughs> knotted. Yeah, I just if you had a cat, don't you think it, Lily it would swat at you? I, I think it absolutely would. I go. Yeah, let us know if y'all have cats if they do do that. And this is why, um, like for example, this is why Priscilla likes working with plastic color works because it comes and it's already on the um, the spool and you don't have to do all this. Uh, from Carol Johnson, how do you know what end to pull that thread? I usually have two ends together. I, think I have no idea. Um, I think you're supposed to pull from so. the side that has your number. Mm -hmm. And it's going to get less knotted, but I just take the whole thing off. So, mm. but if you're going to just pull from the, from the skein, you would pull from the one, the side that has the number on it and it'll pull easier. I just kind of undo the whole thing. Yeah. Just when you loop it, I'm going to zoom in right now. Oh, okay. So I will now. Yeah. Okay. I'll wait. We got a new camera, guys. Mm -hmm. It Very looks cool. like a spaceship. <laughs> when I saw it yesterday, I was like, that doesn't even look like a camera. <laughs> it doesn't. Yeah, no, it does. It it's looks like, like a... something that would be on a car. Uh, we have a temporary name for it. Um, it. I forget what the long one is, but it's Grego for short, because it was Greg Grego something. Um, but uh, there was someone on our quilting channel who gave us a $100 super chat. So I'm waiting for them to get back to me because uh, since they gave us such a generous super chat, I would like for them to name it. Yes, temporary name Grego. Grego. Or Spaceship. Yeah, Spaceship space Grego. Spaceship should be the name. <laughs> okay, so now I'm going to kind of, I'm actually going to, we're going to zoom in over here so you don't see the pattern. Okay, and then I am going to let's see. So first, I am going to get my needles out. I use Pat Carson size twenty six. Probably ninety percent of the time, they come with twenty five needles, and there's like this little paper. It's like um, there you go. Exactly. That's what happens. So it's like gum wrapper. So you just put them back in. So I'll just pull one out. It doesn't usually do that, but it goes back nicely. And then I just put that in here. If you want a tutorial on how to make this, 
needle minder keeper or needle keeper and it's on Lori Holt's channel. I'm going to take off my two wonder clips. I'm going to start I'm going to start kind of here. Or here. Somewhere up here. So I'm going to kind of show you how I'm going to start. So the first thing is that's going to be working with green. So I'm going to pull the green off. And while I'm working with, for example, this green, the first thing I will do is there's six strands in here and I'm going to pull out one strand. So you pull one and if you keep this finger tight and you pull, it'll come off nice. And then what I usually do is I'm going to be using this more and more. So I'm not going to put that back on top of here. I'm going to put it on a bitty board and kind of just put it out of the way. So what I'll do is I'm going to put my two ends together like that. And I'm going to thread my needle by folding it in half that creates two strands. So I've got two strands. We're going to start with the loop method. And um, just looking at my pattern, I left, can you zoom out a tiny bit? Yeah. Sorry, a little bit more, just to, yeah, there. So I left about two inches around. So what I will do is I have this cross stitch key and it has a two inch. So I'll just put it on the corner, put my needle in that two inch, And so I know that I need to just start around here. So where I'm going to start is about 10 stitches down on the pattern. So I'm going to start about right here. Okay, now we can zoom back in. All right. And you can see that I did not serge the edges or do anything like that. Um, because this is just going to be a really quick stitch and I don't feel like I need it. So I'm going to start one of the P's. I turn to the back. Oops. And then I'm going to try not to leave, let it fall through. Okay, perfect. So I've got the loop. I put the loop in and you loop. But if you leave it right here, if you leave that loop exactly like this, sometimes you'll see it from the front. It's kind of hard to explain. So what I do is I kind of move it to the center. And that's going to look prettier on the front. I usually stitch Wherever I'm at, I'll go from top to bottom. So I'm going to do this P from the top to the bottom. And actually, um, I usually use my Halo Go light. So I'm going to probably go a little bit. Can we? Let me see. I need to move the table. Well, I'll be fine. Here. I think it'll be fine. Um, it's just kind of far away, so it's harder for me to see. Here, I think I can scoot the camera a little bit towards you because like that okay there there okay. that's what I need okay thanks because yeah. I can't see so you're gonna see that I stitch in hand and I try to stitch where the needle is always on the front and rarely on the back to go faster I usually use my halo go light which I can show you in a little bit but I think it would confuse the video so I'm not gonna do that today but with the halo go I can go a lot faster because my eyesight is bad Now, if I want my stitches to look really nice, you can railroad and you just put your needle between your stitches, between your threads and go back in. 
and I'll do the next couple of stitches like that without going and you'll kind of see you can do it faster so you can just kind of put it in between and then just go down and then I'm just gonna keep going so let me know what questions y'all have yeah, we have lots of questions that have been coming in uh, give me one sec here okay from Tammy Pug do you already know what you are stitching for the October stitch along yes oh my goodness we're gonna do stitch sorry okay. we're gonna do stitch tober for 45 days because I had a hard time eliminating and I really wanted to do a lot so we are going to be doing a Lori Holt stitch along a Fright Night is going to be the name of the Fat Quarter Shop stitch along I'm going to stitch Autumn Typography by Pine Mountain Designs Let's Talk Chalk by Hands on Design and Calvin and Trixie by Priscilla and Chelsea Oh yeah, and then I'm doing trucking along October and November. So here you can see my thread is kind of tangling. So I just unthread my needle, put my needle through it. It straightens my thread and then I re. Here, let me show you how I thread. With the Pat Carson needles, the um, eye of the needle is a little bit wider, so you can thread easier. Oops. Okay, do you see I just went over two stitches instead of one? So to pull it out, i just going to, you can either put your needle back through or do this. Yeah, and I think it's just because I'm trying to look at two places. I'm trying to look at my work and the screen, and so I'm going to just try to look at my fabric from now on. Oh. A question from Melissa K. Nutson. How do you keep track of your floss color list? A chart, spreadsheet? Spreadsheet. So I got the DMC color card which I can tell you right now is sold out. Um, DMC is having a hard time keeping it in stock. So we, I have a color card. And with that color card, it is sorted by color. And so I put it in spreadsheet by color and all of my drawers are by color. And then I have a spreadsheet and it just has all the detail of, do I have a fresh skein? Um, or do I have it on a floss flower? And then I go there anytime I'm doing a project before. Okay, so now that I'm at the end of the P, I'm going to quickly just look at it compared to my pattern to see if I have any mistakes. It doesn't look like I do. And then I'm going to turn it over. And I'm going to just work my needle through previous stitches. I usually do four or five. So that looks about good. I'm going to pull it through. And then I'm going to clip really close to the stitches. And I use these scissors. They're OmniGrid because they're sharp. And I have about 30 pairs. And I'm not even kidding. She's not. <laughs> it's ridiculous. The other day, Kevin tried to use them. And I was like, don't use them. OK, so then I'm going to go back to my bitty board. and then just pull one thread at a time, put it on my bitty board and just keep going. So I think I'll go, I think I'll do these letters next and then I'll go and do these letters. A uh, question from Valeria Bauer, what is the size of the cloth? 14 count Ada and it is SKU number 
3706-5146. And did you cut it down? I cut it down at the beginning to 10 inches square. If you wanted it bigger, you could do 12 inches. Okay, so to start again, let's see. From Crafting a Planned Life, do you have trouble with your thread twirling up on itself at that length when stitching? No. I, I no. Mm -mm. And then again, I'm going to kind of move it in the middle. You don't have to do that. That's just an OCD thing that I do. Okay. So yeah, I'm gonna just keep stitching, hoping that I'm not making any mistakes <laughs> on camera. Uh, the Missouri Stitcher says, my cats do that. They love floss. We were talking about if cats play. Oh, yeah. With the floss when you're trying to wind it up. Oh, so did uh, Shirley Guzzi says their cat does that too, as does Christine Moore's. Oh, and Christine Moore said, my cat drives me crazy. That's funny. Lori Holt said, Kimberly, we have twin floss cabinets. Oh, yeah, we do. I got my idea from her. I totally <laughs> copied her. And I caught, not only that, I copied, like, how she stores it. Well, she has her fancy floss in hers, and I have DMC in mine. And then I bought something with her that is in my bathroom that has all my other floss. Okay, so you can see there, I kind of went too far. So I just pull it out. And then... And so when I use my Halo Go light, I don't usually make that mistake because I'm looking at it super close. The pokey little pineapple was wondering if you use a needle minder? Sometimes. Depends. Usually what I'll do is I'll put it on here though. I put it, if I have my needle minder, I'll put it on here. So I can grab, like I can grab Lori Holt sheep real quick and put it on here and show you. <laughs> Uh, also, while you had the biddy board out, Jeanne Draper was asking, what is a biddy board? So the biddy board is seven inches, and on one side it's batting, and on the other side it's um, just paper. And you can make them yourself. We have a video on our channel on how to make them. They're Lori Holt design boards, and she filmed that video for us. So you can make them, but um, what I do is I throw this in my bag. I throw the bitty board in my bag, in my bag, and then it sticks to it because it's batting. And because it sticks to it, um, I can just throw it in and then pull it right back out and it'll still be in place. From Angela Stoudinger, why did Kimberly clip the corner of the cloth? That was an accident. Oh. That was a rotary cutter snafu. Oh no. Yeah, that's not on purpose. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you're gonna cut it off, yeah. so it doesn't matter. I mean, I could have neatened it up, but it didn't matter. Mm -hmm. From BB, will there be a mystery stitch along in Stitchtober? Yes, it's Ooh. called Fright Night. Ooh. Uh, Jenny Hancock Briggs is asking when the next uh, Stitch Quarterly project ships. September. September. I don't remember what time of the month. I don't, I think it's like, I don't know. We'll look real quick and see because I don't remember. And so you see that I'm not dragging my thread between my letters. And you can. I just don't. 
but I mean you could totally just keep stitching and not start and stop like I am I'm just showing you what I do at home Denise said September 4th is stitch quarterly and then a few people have been asking how you determined where you started working on the pattern. So what I did, like I showed you on the very beginning, is I measured two inches in and then counted down. And I just randomly decided to start in the top left. You could start in the center. The center of the chart is marked so you could fold your fabric into like quarters and then start in the center it's all just arbitrary i just it's just a random there's no there's there's no right way and there's no wrong way Carol Johnson was asking if the bitty board is sticky so the thread stays on it. It's got batting and the batting holds it down. But it's not definitely not sticky because you wouldn't want sticky on your oops. You wouldn't want sticky on your thread. Mm -hmm. And if you're worried about it moving, you could put two together, but mine never moves. I just throw it in my bag. Faye Dixon says, could you just keep stitching the next letter instead of ending after each letter? Mm -hmm. You could. That's what I was saying is you can totally do that. I just don't. It's kind of a habit. I mean, I'm just showing you what I do at home. You definitely don't have to do what I do. And kind of the goal of this video is to just answer a lot of the questions, you know, and sometimes my answer is just going to be, that's just why I do it. I don't, there's not always a reason, but there's definitely not a right way and a wrong way. It's just, this is just what I do. Oh, April Jackson had uh, replied from what we were telling her earlier about Japan. Uh, she said, it is far away, but y'all have helped me keep me sane. Y'all have helped keep me sane by feeding my stash. I mean, my collection. That's funny. Okay. From Hejan Kim. Hi, Kimberly and Lily. I want to stitch some kind of many houses pattern like Main Street pattern or hometown holidays pattern. What Ada color would you recommend? I prefer, I'm trying to think of the word. I'm trying to think of the word. Um, uh -huh. Let me look in my book. Yeah. Okay, I think pewter, no, that wouldn't look good. think of the name of it. Yeah, we can look it up right now. I mean, you could use what they have. There's a name of something. I'm just, I need Denise to come back because I can't remember the name of it. Okay. Uh, we can go to another question. Oh, he John Kim says overcast? Question mark? No, it's, um, it's the, it's what I always use. It's what I used on my cottage houses. Lamb's wool? Lamb's wool, yes. Okay. Or just use um, what they call for. But yes, lamb's wool. Oh my gosh, thank you, Lily. Yeah. 
I was like, it's got an animal name in it. An <laughs> animal name? Well, that's what I was like thinking, yeah. sheep. I was like, sheep. what am I doing? The Sorry. sheep color. It's really hard to think and, and stitch. stitch. I can't uh -huh. do it. It's, I'm not doing a great job, I'm sorry. Yeah, you're doing great. And so as I'm going, I'm kind of making sure I haven't made a mistake. I know for sure I'm gonna make a mistake on this though, because it's really hard to do both. Um, from Carol Johnson, do you ever just go one way and then come back and cross them all? No, I don't. I mean, I would do a whole row. Like if I was doing a big row, I would, but on letters, I wouldn't. But on a big row, like on the houses, I will. From Marcella Westfall, the DS DMC color chart, does it have samples of threads in it or is it just color blocks? There are two different kinds of DMC color cards. One does have the floss and one does not. The one that we sell is the one with the floss, and it is going to be sold out until probably November based Ooh. on um, what um, the company is telling me. And they also sell them at like Michael's and stuff, but I think the ones at Michael's, they're less expensive, which is okay, and they don't have the thread on them, but it still has the color, so... From Jenny Lombardo, stitching in hand, when you do a large project, how do you handle the bulk of the fabric when working in the middle of the pattern? Can you zoom out? Yeah. Okay. So, and I'm gonna do this in a little bit, but what I do is I fold it over like this and I clip it with Wonder Clips and then I just keep my hand on it and then I'm in the middle. Now, if you've got a big piece and you have a lot of fabric over here and a lot of fabric over here, you would also roll this side. Mm. And then sometimes if I have a ton down here or up here, you can fold it up. And then you end up with like 10 wonder clips, but I'll just wonder clip. I try not to wonder clip on my stitches, but that's what I do. And then it gives me more of a, it's actually easier to hold that way because you have more of a bulk to put your hand on and so it doesn't move. So you can see without, so without Lily zooming out, what I'm doing to stitch on hand, in hand, is I'm just keeping my hand like right here and it just keeps this in place. And this is not in my way because I have it on a table. Now, if I was in my lap, this might get in my way and I might kind of move that over. From Rosalind Parnell, hello from a very hot and steamy day in Cambridge, UK. Late, so maybe this question was already answered. Are you doing a combination of Priscilla and Chelsea's method and the traditional way? Uh, um, I'm kind of just stitching in hand and I just kind of just stitch as I go. When I do letters, I just do, um, I just kind of go in the order that I see, but um, stitching in hand is definitely I learned that from Priscilla and Chelsea. Mm -hmm. The other way I stitch, um, I don't know if I just kind of made it up, I think. <laughs> oh, and then they were asking, if so, how is the back of your work so neat? Um, I just kind of, I start with the, well, I start with the loop method so that leaves less mess and then I go right under to keep it. And then you can see right here, this is kind of sticking out. I will show you a trick on how to get that to go back under right now. So I will take my needle off. I'm gonna grab just a piece of floss that I had left over. I'm gonna create a loop. Can you zoom out a tiny bit? Yeah. Thanks, okay. So I'm gonna create a loop
just like I normally did. Now I want this to go, I don't want to cut this because I don't want it to be too short. So I'm going to weave it back under. And the way you do that is you put your needle through previous stitches just like you did before. Do this, you're creating that loop. You put your thread that's hanging loose in that loop. It might take a couple times to get it. So you put that part that's sticking out inside your loop and then you yank it. Ooh. And it just went back under. So that's how I keep my back neat. But you really don't have to. I mean, you don't have to keep it neat. Um, some people don't like it neat. I say do whatever you want to do. But I just, um, I don't know. It makes me happy so for it to be pretty, so I do it that way. <laughs> Ooh, and I'm ty I'm I'm typing I'm stitching the word happy, yeah. And that's what I think that's the great about stitching is do whatever you want to do. If you don't care how your back looks, don't worry about it. Nobody else cares either. I just prefer this. I don't know. I did see on Facebook a lady's um, back who was really messy, and I was like, oh my goodness! Like it was so messy that I thought that could catch on fire. Okay, now everything's getting, you can see my thread is kind of getting windy. So I unthread it, put my needle right between the two threads and just pull. And you can see now it's straight. And then I'm just gonna re-thread and keep going. And that kind of keeps my, my threads neat. Oops. From Caroline Hopkins, Kimberly, do you ever drop your needle so that it untwists? Oh, I drop my needle all the time. I find them on the floor in my bedroom all the time. Oh. Like, all the time. I just tell Kevin, don't come to this side of the bed because he gets really mad at me. Oh, no. He gets really, well, he, he gets really mad because one time I, one time he, in the quilting room, he stuck his foot on a needle but that was on accident like that was just I dropped a pin and didn't know it oh, no. and we had well we had carpet in the room and so with carpet it's harder to see it I've always wanted a sewing room without carpet but mm -hmm. I don't have one because it hides the stuff and then you step on it and it hurts but oh. yeah no I lose my needles all the time And so you can see with the words, I'm just kind of going whichever direction. Now that one, see I missed the hole by just a tiny bit, but if you don't fix it, it's gonna look ugly. So I just pull it out and then go the other way, pull from the back. Oh, I think they were also asking if I, uh, you know how some people just like let go of the needle to let it untangle when you've got uh when your floss starts to tangle up yeah i do but i always put my needle in between the threads because if i don't it'll stay windy oh. sorry lily i'm asked, i'm not even answering the question right no you're good uh from susan geisler do you highlight your pattern when you finish a stitch no now we do sell highlighter tape that you can use mm. that is supposed to do the same thing if I had a highlighter, I guarantee that highlighter would be on this fabric because I have so much stuff going on. I have so much stuff on my table that I don't trust myself. I just use, um, what I use is this cross line keep, cross stitch line keeper, and you can put it on your pattern and like this, and that's how you just follow because you can move it up as you stitch. Or if you're stitching the house, you can do this, start here and then just move it down as you go. So you can do it either down or up. And so that's how I stay where I'm at. Because yeah, I don't, I don't trust myself with a highlighter. I guarantee that highlighter would be on my 
<laughs> on my fabric and it would probably get on there right at the end. From Marjorie Devlin, what batting do you use for the bitty boards? I made some and after some use, my batting is starting to come apart. So I used 80-20 when I used to make them. Um, do not use 100% cotton because that is too loose of a weave. Mm. I think that's the word. Is that the yeah. word? Yeah, like it's too loose and it'll start coming off. So I would use 80-20. I think polyester would be too thick mm -hmm. also. From Glenda Pryor, I was wondering if there's a conversion chart from DMC to classic color works. There is not, um, but you can Google and you can find some of the colors, but because classic color works and other companies like that dye their thread, they don't want it to be an exact match to DMC because that defeats the purpose of what they're trying to do. So that's why they don't give you a conversion because they feel that their threads are 100% unique and that you should buy them from them. So that's kind of, um, but I mean, there are some charts out there. You just have to Google. There's just not a lot out there. Okay, so now that I'm going, can we zoom out a tiny bit? Sorry. Yeah. So on this, you can see that I have cut it pretty close over here. I'm still, I'm about an inch, but that still gives me plenty of room to put it and my hoop, so I'm fine. Um, if I was at home, I probably would have done a better job with that, but now what I'm gonna do, because I'm gonna be up here, I'm not gonna be as close to the edge, and ignore this, this is just an accident. I'm gonna fold it in, clip it at the top, and now I'm gonna keep stitching, because then it keeps my hand still where I can still stitch easily. All right, from Cindy Christ, I got a fat quarter shop order yesterday. The mail lady asked if I was getting something fun. Oh yes, it's the best kind of package that we get. Thanks for the great service. Oh, thanks. Thanks, Cindy. Okay. From BB, how would you start if you were using fancy floss? I do the same thing. That's ex I do the loop method. You're not supposed to. That's like um, if you're a traditionalist or somebody who really likes variegation, you're supposed to just start and then stitch over your previous stitches. So when I get to like the heart or somewhere on this pattern that is more of um, where I can go in a row, because I will be going a lot faster when I get to rows. I can show you how to start that way. To me, um, I don't care if it's variegated or not. To me, I don't know. It all looks good. To me, I can't tell the difference. So, But I, I know that a lot of people really don't like when I say that. So if you don't like that, that's okay. That's why I say do whatever you want to do. Like, don't worry about what I'm doing. Just do whatever you think is best. From Linda Huff, does the railroad technique help to keep the stitches flat and more uniform? Yes, so you can see this one is kind of messy right there. So I'll show you what I can fix it, I mean. So sometimes I railroad, sometimes I don't. Like on Kringles, that's kind of something that I think I'll keep until I'm really old. So I try to railroad on that one. But this is like just something I'm gonna, I don't know. It doesn't have to be perfect. So on this one, if I railroaded that stitch, it's gonna look neater. Uh, and so let's see, this okay. next stitch I'll railroad real quick and then you can see how fast you can do it. So you can do it fast. So I kinda sometimes do it, sometimes don't. From KT Mickey Nat, I might have missed this as I'm just joining. How did mom's surgery go? Uh, and then they also wanted to say it was pathetic how much I missed Fat Quarter Shop's live stream last Friday. Told my boyfriend only one more sleep until floss tube. 
Oh, okay. It went okay, but I'm living with her until Monday. Ooh. So um, it didn't go great. I'll just say that. Um, but she's doing better. She was doing really good this morning when I left. Oh, good. So when during the day, um, a lady comes and helps her while I'm at work. Mm-hmm. So, um, but I'm going to stay with her until Sunday or Monday. Mm-hmm. But she's doing, like, better. Um, but this weekend she was not. So it's hard, like when you're, you've never had, like we didn't, me and my brother didn't know what to do. And so mm. we were on the phone with the doctor over and over and over, but um, she's better now. I'm glad to hear that, because she's doing better. Yeah, she might be watching. She might be asleep. She told me, she told me this morning, she said, I like to watch quilting better than floss too. <laughs> so I don't know. So if she hasn't said anything, she's probably still asleep. Well, she's quilted before, right? Oh yeah, she quilts. Yeah. Uh-huh. This is like, this is just like this, doing this, her and my daughter say, it takes too much time. <laughs> All right. And then question from mom, the user, mom, uh, how many strands do you use on 14 and 16 count? So I have this little guide. Ooh. So there, so uh, I use two strands. So 14 and then this would be the equivalent of 16 would be two strands. And from crafting a plant life, I don't see how you keep track of where you're stitching when doing the sewing method. I, um, I think I've just been doing it a long time. I don't, and these are just little bitty letters. So I'm just Mm -hmm. going letter. I'm just going stitch by stitch. Mm -hmm. Now, if I was doing like the half stitches all at once and then coming back, I would get lost. Mm -hmm. So I'm kind of just keeping, but also on my pattern over here, I have this going like up and down so that's also my cross stitch line keeper is helping me know where I'm at okay I hope that answers some of it is just kind of experience to like Mm -hmm. yeah it comes with time and practice there you go that okay Uh, from Jillian, I bought ice blue 14 count Ada, but the two strands white is not showing up. Can anyone suggest how to get the white to show up for the snow? Use B5200. It's much brighter. Now, when you put the two skeins next to each other, I used to think, oh, you know, they look the same. But when I was doing snow village, I had to change to 5200. And then there's also 3765, but that has a little bit of a, it's darker. Like maybe a grayish tan tone. It's just a little bit darker. Okay. From JaxB82, what color cloth would you ladies suggest in a 25 count and or 28 count even we for this project? Thanks. 25 count. Um, do we have, Denise, see if there's an aqua. 25 count. I know that any day we're going to be receiving more 25 count by Lori. So when those arrive, we're going to have lots more colors. I feel like when we uh, ask questions like this, we need like a little graphic that pops up that's like floss whisperer loading. Yeah. I can see Denise thinking next to me, but it's hard because we don't have as much 25 count. Mm -hmm. So Mm -hmm. it's not. um... Oops. Okay. Look there. That looks like poopy. <laughs> See that? That's not okay. Aww. So I'm gonna show you what to do. I'm gonna unthread what I just put behind. Pull that stitch out. And I'm gonna show you how you can fix it without re-threading or pulling your stitches out. So I just put my needle in Thread it carefully. Pull it back down. Then I'm gonna pull it taut from behind. Pull one of my scrap threads. There we go. Pull one of my scrap threads and Create a loop. Put 
pull my thread under previous stitches just like I normally would. Pull this, have my loop, put that little thread right in that loop and pull it and then you yank it and it goes through. Magic. And then it looks pretty. And then I can clip it close if you, well actually it's pretty close. It has a little bit off. So that is my little trick to keep everything neat. And you'll notice when I'm doing my letters, I am starting at the top of the letters and going down. So now I have used my first full strand, so I'm gonna unwind this. There we go. I'm gonna unwind this. I pull one off, and then I wind this back. Okay, Denise said for 25 count, 28 count, aqua dyed effect 28 count by fabric flare. So, here we go. So I only have three more letters. I think doing this on white would be, um, if you did this one on all white, Ada, you would just have to change your whites. Like maybe this would have to be aqua, you know, because then your, your white's not gonna show up. But if you use something like lamb's wool, it would show up. Uh, funny comment from Stitch Joy. I love that Kimberly thought someone's messy back might catch on fire. Made me laugh. Well, okay, if you saw it, you would you would agree. It was like piles of stuff. It was like piles of I don't know what it was. It was so funny. Oh, man. I thought it was funny. It was because um, I'm in a bunch of cross stitch groups on Facebook and quilting groups. And so it was like a real lady, like she was in a, I think it was like called Cross Stitch Unlimited Ooh. is the group. And she was just like, oh yeah, this is my pack. I know it looks horrible. And I was just like, oh my goodness, it's going to catch on fire. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. Uh, from the Pokey Little Pineapple, fun watching Kimberly stitch with bright red nails. Oh, thanks. I'm trying to go, I go usually like a million times faster than this, but um, the screen in front of me is throwing me off a little bit. That's funny. But it's keeping me in the frame, I guess. Yes. That's a good pace. Yes. And I usually use this little, um, it's called a daylight. Here, I can zoom in. Here, I'm going to, let's do this for a little bit. How okay. about that? And then let's see if I go, how much faster I go. Okay, let's zoom in. Out. So... Usually I look through this and I can go so much faster, but you can't really tell. So I'm gonna move it away. Well, actually, there we go. But it, you can see through its. Oh, oh. Yeah, like so much, see how much better you can see through it? So that's how I can go faster, but it's distracting for the video. So I'm gonna move it aside. Yeah, the, the camera and the Halo Go don't always get along. No, the Halo Go says no, no to the new spaceship, <laughs> to the new spaceship uh, camera. <laughs> oh, man. Uh, can you come down a little bit so I can just zoom in a little more? Oh, yeah, yeah sorry. Perfect. You're good. Now it's so much darker without that light. I know. <laughs> um, Susan McCallan was saying, I have not cross-stitched in years. This makes me want to start again. And then Creative Mayhem replied to them and said, do it, Susan McCallan. Come down the rabbit hole with us. I know. Like, really. It's like, um, 
once you start, you can't stop. It's like quilting. Mm -hmm. Also, Creative Mayhem is another great username. That should be my life. My name should be Creative Mayhem because it's pretty much that. Emma's getting a, what is she getting again? What's that thing called? Expander. expander. She's getting an expander this morning in her. So I'm excited to like hear how it went. Cause I, when I got braces, I don't even think that was a thing. So mm -hmm. she was at, I mean, I was like, I don't really know what to expect. Um, so mm -hmm. I wonder how that's going. But her orthodontist, he has like several locations around Austin oh. and the, they're really far from our house except for one. So at each week it changes days. So like sometimes he's there on Monday, sometimes mm. he's there Wednesday. So we kind of, whatever day he has that, otherwise we drive an hour. I guess with COVID you wouldn't drive an hour, but it is like at least 30 miles away from our house. Oh, that's yeah. Yeah, like that's it's like in Cedar way. Park or something. Oh, wow. Uh, Creative Mayhem also says, question, my skin is so acidic I am turning needles colors and some are no longer smooth. Do you know of a special needle that will help with this? Um, that happens to Chelsea and she uses the mm. Sullivan's yeah. ballpoint needle and um, that doesn't happen on that one, but I would just maybe throw your needles out more often. And I think like the less expensive needles are gonna do that more often than a more expensive needle. Okay, so here I'm gonna show you something. So I need to do these three, right? But then I need to come back up. So if I come back up and go from here to here, if I go from here to here, my next stitch needs to be here to here. So it's gonna come undone. So to save time, I'm going to go opposite way on the bottom one. And then the other way. And then you can just keep going and you can't tell the difference. From Crafting a Planned Life, do you use the scrap threads or are you just trashing them? Oh, those, I just, um, I don't use those. But I do, anything that will be left over on this, I will use. So I, I like I said, I do waste thread um, because I start and stop so much, but it's what I prefer to do. Um, but yes, I do waste thread. And so the good thing about me wasting thread is when y'all buy kits from Fat Quarter Shop and we base it on what I stitch on, you get more thread. Because um, like, for example, if Cheryl and I stitch the same thing, she will have more thread left over than I would. Hmm. But I think that's, you know, you should do whatever you enjoy, whatever you like, whatever, you know, sparks joy, whatever, mm -hmm. do whatever you want to do. Mm -hmm. Joy. Yeah, and you can do, like, people do ORT jars. They call them ORT jars, and then I don't even know what ORT stands for. Google ORT. Oh. ORT. Other random, some, other random, random things. Something like that. Yeah, it's like something, and they put, like, a mason jar, and you just leave your, your threads in it. And then you can use it for decoration if you want, but. Yeah, I'm sure someone in the comments knows, so please let us know. Yeah, it's something, I, I don't know what it stands for, but they do those. I think if I did that, I'd be scared because I'd be like pulling in there, like trying to find old thread and then I'd pull the wrong one. That's funny. Ashley said Marie Kondo life because you said spark joy. Oh, that's what that's from. Yeah. yeah. Sorry. Oh, it's okay. I should have said that then. No, I think it's good. It's the same concept as sparks joy. I haven't read her book, but I've watched several of her interviews on YouTube. So it's looking good. So I've got one more S. Uh, some people are saying old random thread. Some people are saying old ragged threads. Oh, well, we were not even close, but whatever. <laughs> That's funny. What did I say? I, whatever. I don't yeah. even remember. That's so funny. I think we said random. I'm not sure. 
Um, from R. Elliman, can you explain railroading? Yes, I'll do it again. So railroading is you split your threads and it makes it less um, messy. So, okay, so this is what I'm going to do for y'all for railroading. I'm going to do every S stitch with the railroad. I'm going to show you the first time and then um, you'll just watch for it on the rest. Hold on. Sorry, I have a little... I need to rethread my thread. Rethread my thread? Needle? Needle! <laughs> I was like, <laughs> I'm like. It's, we've just gone past the hour mark. We have? Oh my gosh, yeah. I gotta hurry up. It's 10 07. No, you're oh, good. Oh no, you're good. oh my gosh. I only have these letters. Oh my gosh, there's time. no way I'm gonna finish. I'm probably only gonna do like two hours. There's no way I'm gonna finish. Okay. Let's take your time. Okay, so I start with the loop on the back. I move my loop so it's not right at the front. And then I'm going to railroad. So I'm going to do the same thing before where I go down, up. Okay, so railroading I would only do on your top stitch because it wouldn't matter on the bottom because you can't see your bottom stitch. You split the needle between the threads like that. And so you can really see it there. And then I'm going to do it a couple more times, but faster. So here you just split your threads while you're going back down. And so this Friday is World of Cross Stitch Day, so y'all should um, just stitch all day. That's what I, that's what I want to do. <laughs> okay, so then like I'm going to railroad again, split your threads. It just makes them lie flatter. So I'm not going to say it, but I'm just going to do it on all the rest of the S's, and then y'all can see. It doesn't take too much time if you, um, but it does, t it does take more time, but once you kind of get in a rhythm, you can go faster, especially if you're in a row. Mm -hmm. From Susan McCallan, where did you learn all your tips and tricks, and who taught you to cross stitch? Okay, when I was a little girl, a lady named Severine Lackey, that was my mom's friend, she worked with her, and then they square danced together, and she taught me. <laughs> but back then, I didn't, I didn't even know how to loop method until, like, I was in college, because I was watching a CBS show, and a lady did it on the CBS, no, not CBS, PBS. PBS, yeah. Yeah, there used to be a lady who would cross-stitch on PBS when I was in college. Mm. Um, and then now, I mean, you can just Google YouTube. Now YouTube. Yeah, YouTube is... Um, has a lot, but I mean, when I was younger, there wasn't, I didn't even have cable until I was like 15 or something. Like they didn't have, I lived in the country and they didn't have it. I mean, it, it just wasn't a thing. For a few stitches, uh, can you just slowly show what you're doing with the railroading? Mm -hmm. Thank you. do it on the white too this is my last stitch so you just put your needle between threads it doesn't matter where you can do it here you can do it from behind it doesn't matter as long as you just split your threads put your needle back in and it makes the threads lie the same way so you can see, you can't tell that much difference. These were all railroaded and these were not. So, but you can tell a difference between the two S's. So yay, I have happiness done. Yay. Happiness. Makes me want to sing that song, Happy Something. And make but I don't, I don't think I can sing it because copyright infringement will take me off YouTube. <laughs> well, how old is the song that you want to sing? Oh, it's recent, I think. Oh, okay. I think yeah. it's like John Legend. I don't even know who it is. Okay, so there's my happiness. So I think what I will do is do the white. I'll start here and do the white. Now, when I'm done with my green... 
since I'm going to change colors, I will put this back on my floss flower. So I just loop it a couple times, create a loop, and put it back on here. And then that way it's just out of my way, and I'll move to the next color. And then that way, it doesn't get too messy. Now, if I had green that I was gonna use in the next couple minutes, I would, but the next, the green's not gonna be used for quite a while, so I'll put it away. And then I'll pull my white out. And this one, we're just using the plain white from DMC, it's called Blanc. Blanc. Sorry. It's called Blanc, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. it is Blanc. Oh, sorry, I thought y'all said something else. Sorry, I just said Blanc in a weird accent. I just think it's funny that it's called Blanc. Well, I think it's confusing because <laughs> people put white and then people are like, well, what is, nobody knows. Right. So I wish it was just called white because the designers use the word white. Yeah. White and so French. it's, um, I wish they just, or I don't know. I think it's confusing. Okay. So now we're going to start with our white. Now that I am going to be over here, I'm going to roll this in more. Oh, were you talking about the Pharrell Williams song earlier? Yeah, that. Okay. I don't even know who he is, but yes, that. Yeah, yeah something like that. Okay, so on white, it is better to railroad on white because white will show the most flaws of any color when you're mm -hmm. stitching. So when you're stitching black, you can make more mistakes because nobody's gonna see it, but white, you see every little thing. So, this one will be more traditional where I stitch in rows and I'm going to railroad. So you can see I've got my needle between the two threads. Then I come back up and you can see that it's lying flat. Do the same thing, put your needle two through threads. So you can put your needle from behind or from the front, either one. So this next one, you're going to see that there are three stitches and then two stitches. So I'm going to do these three first single stitches and then these last two as a row. And then that way when I go down, I go from here to here rather than here to here. And it does save thread, but also it just keeps my back neat. Sandra Hagen's asking, can you railroad if you are using more than two threads? Yes, you just rail railroad between any of the, like it doesn't, you just pick the center. Like if there's four strands, you would railroad between two. Mm -hmm. If there's three, you would just pick one. Mm -hmm. Judy Kepler says, have you gotten your monochromatic seasons framed? Yes, they can be picked up today. Ooh. Actually, they called me and they said, they called yesterday and said they're ready, but now that I'm taking care of my mom for the week, um, I'll get them next week. But I literally was just there Saturday dropping stuff off. Ooh. So... But I'm excited. I dropped off um, my Christmas typography and Snow Village. So, and I like the frames they had, so I was excited. Mm. I had the lady confused though, because I was asking for a scalloped red, and I don't, I still don't know what she thought I meant. But she did not know what I was talking about. Mm. She thought I was crazy. She thought I was crazy. Oh. Bex from Texas says, we really appreciate your time, Kimberly. And she put like 10 exclamation points. Oh, thanks. I feel like I'm boring you guys. No. No, so no. then you just split the threads. And, you know, sometimes when I'm, when I do the white, I'll probably split most of them. If I've got a deadline to meet, I'm not going to railroad. Just depends what kind of mood I'm into. 
Holly and Petch Martin says, so how often do you throw away needles? Uh, every project. Mm. And one of the reasons why is if your hands sweat, like for example, the other day, I stitched three hours straight and I didn't get up to go to the bathroom or anything. And so by the end, it was, um, my hands were just sweaty and it was just nasty. So because of that, um, I changed the needle just because, but I also keep um, Neutrogena makeup removers mm -hmm. and then kind of wipe my hands um, as I go. But I mean, I guess after each project, I mean this one, this is not a very big project, so I probably wouldn't throw it away after this one. Katrina E. says, will you be selling the autumn typography pattern in paper? Yes. If we're out now, then it's on order. Okay, so yeah, Denise has to order it. Yeah, she's going to order it in paper. Susan Geisler says, was the lady Shea Pendragon on PBS? Oh, I have no idea. That was 30 years ago when I was in college, 1997. I was, well, uh, well actually it was 20. Cause I was thinking about, cause I've been staying at my mom's house and I was thinking about, cause I mean, I've always lived really close to her. So there's no reason I need to stay there. Mm -hmm. So I thought it's been 23 years since I spent the night in her house. Wow. And that was when, um, when I studied for the CPA exam, I stayed at her house. She was at the Panama Canal with my dad. My granny stayed there and just made me every meal. And I studied for like, 80 hours straight the week before the test so that I would pass it the first time because mm -hmm. I was like not about to do that again. <laughs> From Jolyn Catledge, how do you keep the cloth unwrinkled when you clip it with Wonder Clips? Is it the type of cloth? Um, yeah, it doesn't wrinkle. You just iron it at the end. And so here you can see that I've got a lot of rows. And so I'm really over here, I'm really using the line keeper because um, to keep up where I'm at and I keep the line keeper, I think, yeah, above my last stitch. So I'm gonna check real quick, real quick to make sure I'm on the right spot before I keep going, sorry. Okay. Stacey Fallon says, question, is it possible to carry thread separators? I don't know what that is. So sure, can you send a link yeah, to can Denise you send us a link? at fatquartershop.com? I don't know what that is. I've never heard of that. So yeah, I mean, if we can find it, we can. From Faye Dixon, is there any length of leftover thread that you would save? Um, maybe if it was like 18 inches and if I was getting low, sometimes I get low on fancy floss. So, um, if I'm getting low on a project, I'll just keep it until the very end of the project. And then if I need more, I just keep it on my side table and I just grab from it. R. Elman says, is there a benefit to stitching without a hoop or a Q-snap? It's just personal preference. I like it because I can do the um, sewing method where I can go a little bit faster. But if you're working with the Q-snap, you can loosen it and still do this. It's all about whatever you prefer. From Paula Thorne, when you say that you break a needle, what exactly do you mean and or what do you do to break it? I know what a broken needle looks like on a sewing machine, super scary, how about with cross stitch? Okay, so I don't usually break these. If I have a Bowen or a DMC or a John James, I can break them quick. These I don't break, but I bend them. So I will bend these and they're not, you cannot bend them back. I bend these all the time and it's from just going too fast. If I bend it 
this way, which happens so often and I'm trying to stitch. If I'm stitching, it'll I'll be trying to stitch the other way and then the needle won't go through. So that's when I will throw it away. Um, and it's especially like if I'm working with a 16 or 18 count, your holes are tighter. So when you're trying to do this, it's gonna, it just gets used too much, I guess. But yeah, I think it depends on the brand mm -hmm. and um, the quality. But I, the, I don't break the I don't break the Pat Carson, which look like this in the bag, the yellow ones. Um, but I bend them, and I have tried to unbend them, just to be lazy, so I don't have to get up and get another one. And that you cannot unbend them because I have tried. <laughs> Um, but when they do break, it is like a down the middle kind oh, of Oh, yeah. Thing. It's, oh, sorry, Lily. No, yeah, it just breaks right there. It just pop, and then you got two halves. You got two needles. Mm -hmm. <laughs> one with a hole and one without. <laughs> oh, that's funny. Oh, my God. It's gosh. not funny, Lily. Oh. Well, I've done that when doing, like, uh, hand binding, and it oh, just breaks, and you yeah. just re-thread it and keep going. Um from Gabriel Fuentes, he said, in 97, I was six years old. Oh yeah, I graduated college in 1997. Mm -hmm. I graduated high school in 1992. I'm 46. I was trying to think how old I was last night. Because I was watching a YouTuber, and he was, he had his, um, he was doing a, he doesn't do live streams, but he just sits and talks. And he just sat and talked for his 46th birthday, and I thought, how old am I? <laughs> and I was the same age, and I thought, wow. When you're when you get older, you just forget what age you are because it just doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. I told Kevin the other day, I'm like, well, we're half dead. And he was like, what do you mean? I'm like, well, we're definitely not living till we're 90, so we've lived half our life. That's what my niece calls my her mom is half dead, which I think is really not nice. That's savage, yeah. But um. That's where I got the half dead because she said it and I was like, what does that mean? And then she explained it. I mean, it's a joke between them, mm -hmm. but I was like, oh my goodness, that means I'm half dead too. Oh my God. Okay. So I'm just kind of checking to make sure I'm at the right spot. And just moving my line keeper down. And then I'm going to keep going. And then I'm going to hope that when I get around that it all ma matches up. It probably will. Okay, from crafting a plan life, is there a difference between doubling a single thread and doing the loop versus using two strands of floss and just covering the end by stitching over it? Hope is make, this makes sense. So on DMC, there's no difference. On a fancy floss that has dyed and it has different variegation throughout, it will look different because you will show more variegation if you keep the two strands together. So that's what you're supposed to do when you're working with fancy floss. And I can show you when we get to a part that I have a big long row, how you would start and stop that way. From Tamara Newby, when would you use, <clears throat> excuse me, sorry. When will you, you use the leftover threads you put on the bitty board rather than always starting with a new thread? I always start with a new thread. Only time I would put something on this bitty board is if it, if I thought I was going to be short thread mm -hmm. or, um, yeah, I usually just start with new thread. Or if I have like, if I've done like two stitches and I have a ton left, I'll keep it. And especially if you're working with DMC, I mean, DMC is so inexpensive that it just, I mean, I see people complaining about, oh my gosh, DMC prices went up. I'm like, it's 60 cents. Mm -hmm. It's 90 cents. Like, it's it's just a couple cents. That's like four, that's like four strands for a Starbucks. So you could just not get a Starbucks and you could have more strands, I guess. But so for me, I just, DMC, I don't try to keep it. Now, if I'm working with uh, silk, I will keep every piece of it because mm -hmm. that's expensive and I don't want to have to get a new skein. I just want one skein. And Fun. so here I'm going to kind of just look to see if I'm on the same thing and I am and then just keep, I kind of check myself every now and then. Funny comment from Melissa K. Knudsen. 
my four-year-old is watching and said, Mama, if you stitched like her, you would have a mess. LOL. I would have a mess. She would have a mess, yeah. That's what her four-year-old told her. That's cute. From Sharon W., what's the sewing method? The sewing method is right there. It's where you keep your needle always on the front. So a traditional method would be this. I don't even know what it's called, but this is like the way I used to stitch. Like I didn't even know you could keep the needle on the front. So this is like one stitch. Stick and stab? Stick and stab. Stick and stab. So that's, um, but I just kind of try to keep the needle on the front. It is harder. If you're working with like an 18 count, it's much harder because you don't have as much room. From Sharon Hutchinson, do you ever do one over one on 25 count? One over one and me are not friends. No, <laughs> I can barely see 14 count Ada to be honest. No. And it's one of those things where, you know, I would probably like if I went to a retreat and somebody wanted to show me how to do it, I would definitely want to learn it. But doing it constantly, I don't think would be um, sustainable with my eyesight because I have, um, there's no way. But I think that the stuff that I watch on YouTube, when I watch people do it, I think it's beautiful. I think it looks great. I just don't think that um, I would be able to pull that off. I think I would get frustrated because my eyesight's so bad, and then it would just wouldn't be as enjoyable. But I mean, I like Ada. I like 14 count Ada, so <laughs> I like simple. Okay, you can see right there, I went through the wrong way. Mm -hmm. So I just pull my thread under. From Mary Zufi, is there a needle that is half the size of a regular needle? You can get John James Petites and they're shorter. So there would be like half, they're like this. They don't have this bottom part, but they're, um, and they're really fun to use, but, um, and I like using them, but I break them because they're not as sturdy because they're shorter. So there's not as much strength to it because it's shorter. But yeah, John James Petites, and there's some that are just regular and then some that are gold. And I think we have both. I think the gold are harder to get, like they're not in stock as much when we try to reorder them. From Susan Lent, uh, Lily, your camera angle magnifies Kimberly's stitches so perfectly for me. Is this what it would look like if I used a magnifier gadget? Absolutely. Yes, and there's different, when you get a magnifier, so I use the Halo Go, it magnifies at, um, Denise is gonna look at what it magnifies at, but it does make a difference, um, cause some are only like 1.5, and with a 1.5 magnification, it doesn't do anything for me because my eyesight is so bad. So, um, it magnifies at 2.25. So um, just based on your eyesight, you know, if your eyesight's not that bad, you know, you could get a 1.5 or a 2. 2.5 is great because I have bad eyesight. Now, I did go to Lens Crafters the other day and I was looking and I was looking at their reading glasses and I put them on just to see like if I was just sitting somewhere like in the airport or something and I wanted to just use those to stitch and and I was like oh it, it was like I couldn't even tell a difference that's how bad my eyesight is and I was like do y'all have higher magnification like 2.5 or 3 and the lady was like uh no yeah. I don't even know if that exists but um but I was like really looking at it because I thought well this might be better because if I'm on a plane I mean I don't know when I'm going to ever be on a plane again, but just, you know, then I don't have that big magnifier, um, but it didn't make a difference with the 2.0, but if I might, I am going to try if I can find some that are bigger magnification. 
Oh, can you push the stitching up a little bit? Uh-huh. Thank you. Look, see, I stitched it down because I got all that done. <laughs> From Annie Shaw, can I ask why you do not stitch one thread, cross, then go back and do the other cross? That's I, how, oh, sorry, go ahead. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's what I'm doing now, actually. And that's what I will do when I'm working on something that's a full row. So right here, if you have a full row, like from here to here, I would go all the way across and all the way back. Mm -hmm. But since we're on just little sections, I'm just doing it whatever feels most comfortable, but I agree. Doing, especially if you're doing like a big long row, I would definitely do a row. So I kind of just do whatever um, I think is gonna go the fastest or look the neatest. So the way that I do the border might not be the way that I do the house. Do you think that makes sense, Lily? What I said? I think so. Okay. From Tammy Pugh, my husband says he will make you feel younger. He graduated college the first time in 1987. That's when um, I was in seventh grade. There you go. Because <laughs> I can remember my brother graduated high school in 86. He's a lot older than me. Mm -hmm. I told him, as I saw him this weekend, I was like, we are getting really old. Well, and then, you know, my daughter was looking at um, all the pictures around my mom's house. I mean, she's seen them before, but she's like, oh, my goodness, mother. Mm. Look at your hair. I'm like, I know. I liked it. It was 80s. <laughs> it's like, like, that used to be a trend. I was going to say, would you ever wear your hair like that again? No. <laughs> my mom loves it, though. She does not like my hair right now. She likes oh. it curly. That's oh. just my mom. My mom's fancy. <laughs> um, I don't even own a curling iron. But yesterday, okay, so I went to her house and I had to get her at the hospital at a certain time because she went back to the hospital. So I had to get her by, because there's all these rules. So I ran mm -hmm. home to get all my stuff, but I forgot my hair dryer and all my hair stuff. I remembered my shampoo. So I came to work yesterday with wet hair because she doesn't have a hair dryer in her house. I even called my brother. I was like, can you ask your wife? <laughs> Do you think there's a hair dryer in here? And they were like, no. Hmm. From Gwen Smith, do you find on most patterns that thread requirements are over generous or not? No, I think they're accurate. I think some people don't, some designers just list colors and they don't say the number of skeins. So that's what I would watch out for. Um, on Kringles, I ran out of some colors, but the reason I ran out is because I stitch like this and I don't save every little bit. Um, so, okay, so now I'm gonna run that through the back. Now this one is harder to run through the back because I can't just go up. Like I can't just pull my thread up. So I'm gonna go through one side and then I'll go through another side so that it's through enough, so it's through enough stitches and that it won't fall out. And of course that didn't work, so I'm gonna redo that. Um, so I try to go through at least four to five on the back. Um, and a few people were suggesting if you wanted to get the um, glasses that were 2.5, 2.75, and 3 and higher, uh, Walmart has them, Dollar Store has them, oh. Rite Aid, Costco. Maybe I'll just order some online because I'm not going to the store. Oh, yeah. Someone said Amazon. Oh. Okay. Well, then I'm going to do that. Yes. Yeah, because I had to get a... Um, let me check my stitches real quick. I had to get... Had to get new glasses, so when I got new glasses, I got sunglasses, but when the sunglasses came, the sunglasses, the alignment of the bifocals was not the same as my glasses, and so I couldn't see out of them. So um, we just changed them to be the exact same as my glasses, the same alignment of the bifocals. Mm -hmm. And she said that was common. 
So I'm going to get my sunglasses in like a month. Ooh. Uh, from Charlene Miller, when will you have the pattern and floss requirements for Fright Night? August 31st. August 31st. Oh, and from Lori Taylor, what else did Kimberly say she was going to stitch in October besides the mystery Fright Night? Okay, will you pull the list up? Okay, hey. good. Okay, I'm going to read it to you. Denise is ready. Go to the right. Okay, I'm gonna do a stitch card project with using stitch card F and some other stitch cards from Lori Holt. And it's gonna be nine of her stitch cards with a free border. I'm gonna do Fright Night, which is our mystery stitch along. That's five parts. I'm gonna do Trucking Along October and November, Calvin and Trixie, Let's Talk Autumn by Hands on Design, Autumn Typography, and then I'm going to do the Let's Talk Autumn pillow. So I spread it over 45 days. I'm glad that I did that yesterday because y'all are asking. Because <laughs> I, um, but I, I am not as prepared in terms of pulling all of my supplies. So, and I am going to on Autumn Typography. We're going to totally change the colors, but I haven't gotten to that yet. And before that, I'm going to try to get a lot of um, a lot of other things done. I'm not going to just not stitch. We have some really cool stuff coming up in about two weeks. Your guys are going to love it, I think. Ooh. We've already done two of the videos. Yes. Three. Oh, three. Yes, yeah. three. <laughs> From Kathy Koganor, have you considered starting a silk floss club? Um, we can start a silk, silk floss club with NPI mm -hmm. if enough people are interested. Um, we could not with Classic Color Works because they do not keep... Um, it's something that they focus more on the cotton, so I think it would be hard for her to supply the silk also. But NPI, if y'all are interested, kind of, you know, email Denise at Fat Quarter Shop some ideas. Um, or me, Kimberly, at Fat Quarter Shop. Y'all can put us both on it. And then, you know, how many skeins would you want per month? What kind of colorways? That kind of thing. Yeah. Well, we can also start a, a post in the community tab for everyone to let us know there. We okay, good. Then answers. will you tell me when there's answers there? Yes. <laughs> That's the... I, I still haven't figured out on YouTube what the difference between subscriptions and then this is other tab and i'm like what's the difference i'm so confused because there's it. there's like there's subscriptions there's trending and then there's notifications there's no hang on let me look at my youtube here there's Let's two see. different okay. tabs one in the center and then one to the right and i don't know okay. what the difference is yeah there's home and then you get explore which is where youtube like recommends things based off of what you watch subscriptions which is everyone who you subscribe to their most recent video oh floss tubes live hello um, notifications, meaning anyone who you've hit the bell for, their video is going to be listed on there. Their most That's recent. That's why. Okay. And then library is like where you can go to see your playlist, your watch later, your purchases, stuff like that. Um, so community tab, you actually have to go to the person's page and then hit community. Or if it's like a post we've done recently, if you're just scrolling on the home area on youtube it'll pop up on there okay like a it's like a feed kind of like facebook yeah i'm on youtube more than facebook <laughs> but now i'm subscribed to so many people that i'm lost it's really not even that many people but um the people that i subscribe to do stuff about every day mm -hmm. they're like more like i watch you know like they come out with one biography a day or one wow. they're just little small videos they're like 20 minute videos and they're more like just independent people they're not oh. big companies they're just like people in their basement okay i was like that's a lot of production uh-huh from stacy fallon have you ever thought about selling an optional pre search piece of fabric for patterns no i don't think we could do that here we have a serger but it does, i don't yeah. think we could with everything else going on i don't think we could do that but 
Yeah. I know your local needle workshops, they do that. Oh, that's cool. I didn't know. Mm-hmm. That. Like some of them will, when you buy it, they'll search it for you. Like if you, mm-hmm. like if you go into a local needle workshop uh-huh. and you buy like a yard, but or, or like they say they have like a yard, mm-hmm. but you don't want a yard, you want a fat quarter, they'll cut it. And some of them, you, they'll ask you, do you want me to surge it? Mm-hmm. And you can say yes or no. That's really cool. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. From Mary Tillman, sorry if this has been asked, but why does Kimberly split the threads on some stitches but not others? Oh, just... Um, time. And white, I think white shows more flaws but yeah if it's something that i'm going to like keep and treasure forever and i'm going to i'm going to railroad more often but uh, stitching with the sister lease was asking if you had tried npi already i have not okay i am um, have it in my house but i'm not going to go home until oh for a little hopefully bit. sunday <laughs> um yeah yeah, I had to get Kevin to bring a bunch of stuff. Because Kevin's still living at home, so he can, mm-hmm. like, if I forget something, I told him, oh, I want this, I want that. Mm-hmm. He brought it all. Mm-hmm. So that's good. I didn't have to drive back. Mm-hmm. Um, and then they were also asking, is Belle Soie silk too? Yes. And I love it. I have all of it, and I love it. It's so easy to stitch with because it just glides through. Uh, Susan McCallum was saying the line keepers are sold out. When will we be getting more? September 15th. Long time. Everything is delayed because of COVID. But um, but they're awesome. Mm-hmm. And there's, I mean, it's something that we did that there's nothing else like there mm-hmm. out there on the market. From Pokey Little Pineapple, uh, I think Kimberly, you mentioned you do vertical stitching. Why not stitch horizontal? I think it's just maybe I'm used to rows, and I think it saves more thread. But you could, like, if you were doing fancy floss and you wanted your door to be like up and down, and you wanted that grain to show, you could do that. And probably, you know. Probably some of it is just that's the way I learned. Okay, so see how that looks ugly. I'm gonna undo that. Denise Marie was asking, what will Kimberly be stitching on Friday? Friday, oh, I'm gonna stitch this awesome thing that I've been working on for two weeks and I'm gonna finish it. And it's for an upcoming video that we're going to film on Monday and release in like two weeks and it's going to be awesome, but I can't tell you what it is. But it's not going to be on video. No, it's not going to be on video. I was going to do that, but then I have the quilting live stream. So we're going to just do this for World of Cross Stitch Day, but I will stitch Friday. Yes. It just won't be recorded. Oh, yeah. Uh, Raylene Cheruby says, hi from Australia. What is NPI, please? NPI is a brand of thread and they sell silk thread that comes on a skein and there's eight strands per skein. And it's just something that we got a lot of requests for, so we have it now. And there's lots of colors. It's kind of like DMC where there's like tons and tons of colors. Ooh. And they don't, um, one thing that I think is interesting is they don't name their colors. They Ooh. number them. Ooh. So, you can't search like red NPI. Mm-hmm. They have color groups, which that could be a way that we could do a club, is mm-hmm. we could do color groups, um, but they just, it's just different. And I don't know why they do numbers instead of names, I don't know. Uh, and then a few people are asking, next chance you get, if you could just demonstrate how the cross stitch line keeper works. Mm-hmm. So right here, I'm right here, 
which is like right here. So I I did like, um, okay, so I did these three, so I do these three at a time, and I can see it easily. When I finish those three, I'll come down and do the next two. And so as I stitch, I come down, and then I can see the previous stitches. You could also go the reverse way, but I find going top to bottom is easiest. So right now, I'm doing these six. One, two, three, four, five, six, they're all the same. So I'll do those and then I'll move my line keeper down to here. Mm -hmm. So I kind of keep it um, and it's magnet and it doesn't break. Mm -hmm. And there's two that come in a package, four. four that come in a package, two of each size. I knew that was wrong. And there's a longer one and a skinnier one. Shorter. Yes, sorry, shorter and longer. And then you could also, if you're working on something that's like a square, you could do this. And then it, when the best thing about it is, especially if you're working with something black and white, it's really hard to tell the difference in your symbols. And so this really helps. Like if you're working on a corner, you can just block it in. Okay. Uh, and I lost a question, but someone was asking if you could just leave it in your bag like day and night like that with the line keepers attached to the bag? Yes, bottom. yes, yes, yes. Okay. And then it'll, then when you come back to it, you know, okay, okay. this is where I was at. And it's a magnet on the front and the back. I mean, it's going to move around a little bit, but it doesn't really move around that much. Mm -hmm. Okay. From Rob Payton, does NPI have any variegation or is it just solid? Solid. And so Belle Swa has variegation and 12 strands where NPI is solid and eight strands. Uh, from Susan Geisler, I ordered your thread pack for Kringle. Will I have enough thread? Yes. I just started with one skein of each so that was my, and then what we bought at market, those packs, those were just sampler packs that don't have DMC. So if you bought that, that wouldn't have the DMC. Okay, from Ana Sendejas, good morning, Kimberly. Do you think you could start a club with 25 count Lugana? That one is a little bit harder, um, but it is on our list. That might be something that we put on our calendar and then January 2nd we look at. It's harder because there's a lot of different manufacturers, a lot of different sizes, and a lot of different prices. So that would be why it's a little bit harder. And also we're trying to kind of wait until um, Things kind of calm down in the world before we start opening a bunch of other stuff just because of availability right now is really um, is slow on everything and so it's better to get more you know you're gonna get a better result if you wait a little bit from Jessica Ghana at some point could you make a video on how to use thread conditioner and recommendations sure I can show you let me see. see. I felt like we had one, but it was from a different hardware box. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'll have to do it. Maybe I can do it next time. We'll put it on the list for next time. I don't have any in my bag. I think it's next to my bed at home. But I definitely am not an expert on it. I can tell you that for mm -hmm. sure. I um, definitely use too much of it. <laughs> Oh, can you uh, push your stitching up a little bit, please? Thank you. From Denise Marie, does Kimberly have an all-time favorite cross-stitch project that she has finished? Oh. Or top five? Okay, Prim Village, Snow Village. I like prim stitch series that I'm doing right now. And I really want to make 
that's on my list that I really want to do. Glitter Village. Ooh. So that one is like a maybe a bucket list one that I really want to do. Um, I do like all of the the, the um, cottages of the month that I did. I love those because I put those out every month. So those would be my favorites. From Stella Napier, I looked in the app store for Kimberly's Time Tracker. Can you show us that app again? Yeah. But my phone has a million text messages. So, <laughs> Okay, so here's my time tracker. I've been doing this an hour and 48 minutes. I will show you what it looks like on my... It says right there, time tracker. That's it. The little logo right there. Is that baby Piggy as your background? Yeah, that's Piggy. Oh, he's such a baby. No, that's a recent picture. That's, that's like a, a year ago. One? That's my little baby. He he's not so very fat. Little. He's not very fat. Oh. No, he's no, he's he's really. I mean, he's. I don't think he likes that I'm not home. Oh, okay. oh yes, Piggy is my. Piggy is my um, background because if I put one of my kids as a background, the others get mad. Aww. And if I put all four, then you can't see it. Yeah. So it's kind of like Piggy wins. Yeah, Piggy wins. <laughs> and the kids all like Piggy, so. Well, okay, that's a big old knot. See, oh, no. That happens. So on that, what I'm going to do is just... Um, Try to undo it and then I'll probably just tie it off on the back because it just gets. I'm going to just cut right here because I don't want to mess with it. Try to pull the threads out. Yeah, pull the threads out that are the other side and then I'm just going to finish like do a half stitch and then pull it to the back and that way I don't really have to mess with it anymore because when it gets like that I just feel like it's just too um it just gets messy and that's when a thread conditioner is great to use do we have like a thread magic or thread heaven in the warehouse I could use oh. I don't know. I don't know if we're one of them. One of the companies that makes that is now on business. They closed. Well, they retired. And then there's one other. Um, I just don't have it in my bag. But it does it make it makes it faster. It's just it's sticky. they're gonna go get thread magic and I'll show you um, from S favela how long did it take you to feel confident using the sewing method about a month That's quite a while long. I thought that was a long time oh. Lily <laughs> I feel like if you can like, acclimate to something in a month, like, that's pretty good. Because our videos that we did for Mania last year, you'll see that I did them all in... Um, oh, yeah, in Q-snaps. Yeah, and remember, it was a lot slower. So that kind of looks messy. I don't know what's going on with that. It's so funny. Every time you said, like, oh, that looks messy, I'm like, what? It does? <laughs> it's like funk. It's like funk. Something is off right there. From Gwen Smith, can you talk about things you look for in a good cross-stitch pattern? For me, 
I only care about the design. If the pattern is black or white or color, that doesn't matter. I just care, would it look good in my house or my office or my kid's room or would I really use it? So honestly, that's what I look for when I'm gonna buy something. Now, I prefer to stitch patterns that are color, like um, Lori Holtz or Priscilla and Chelsea stitching with the Housewives. I much prefer to stitch with color um, on the inside. And this one is color, the one that we're doing right now. But in the end, if I do it, like for example, yesterday, Denise and I planned out Stitchtober, and I had more that I had picked the number of days. So we just decided to extend it. That doesn't mean we'll extend it every year, but I just want to be able to get everything finished and I want to be able to space it out where I will actually finish mm -hmm. and I will have achievable goals. So um, those were all things that when they came in and went on the website, I thought, okay, I gotta, I gotta stitch that. So if I like it, I'll stitch it. Doesn't matter to me if the inside is black or white or color. Thank you. So Denise brought the thread magic. I'll show it in a second. From Donna B, can you use a thread conditioner on hand dye thread? I have. I don't know. Um, I don't know the rules on on thread conditioner because I know like a lot of people who are like truest or you know they stitch over one or they do it exactly you know one x at a time when they're doing um, variegate not hand dyed floss um, they don't usually use use it so it's great though if you're a quilter and um, that's probably why it's not in my bag, it's probably in my binding bag. Mm -hmm. um, it's great for when you're working on binding mm -hmm. because it makes it, um, you're working with a thicker, when you're putting your needle through your fabric, it's much thicker and it makes it glide. Mm -hmm. So I am going to finish this off and then I'm gonna show you kind of some things, but just, I would say, I don't wanna say take it with a grain of salt, but I'm no expert on thread conditioners, so um, it's just kind of what I've done. From Katie and Mickey Nat, do you have to stitch in a hand to use the sewing method? No. You don't because if you're using a Q-snap, you can loosen it and then you'll have enough room to do it. So if you, if you have enough room in your hoop to loosen, you'll be fine. So it's looking pretty good. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to do this and then I'll probably start the little house. But hopefully when I get down here, these lines up and then um, yeah okay so with thread conditioner I've got my thread I'm gonna open this so when you open thread magic it usually just opens but okay there are these little things I don't know what you call them but they're so that you can slide your thread down over this. So some people just put their needle in and that helps it glide through. So that's one thing you can do. Somebody told me that on the live stream and I thought it was crazy and then I looked it up and they were correct. <laughs> this is what the company says to do because they do have a video on their website we can link it on our website, but they have a generic video on how to use it. What you do is you, I guess you put it on one side there and you put it on the side opposite, but you pull the thread all the way down through. So it's in there. 
and then you glide it through. But you keep it down and it just covers the entire thread. And it's like in those little slots. Uh huh. It's in the slot, so it's in there. So it's 100% covered. Mm -hmm. There you go. And you can, and the good thing about having all the slots is next time you can use the different slots. Mm -hmm. Now what's going to happen is, I can already tell you, when this little wax or whatever this is called, when it gets mm -hmm. low, like when it, when you use a lot of it, it's going to get all sticky and it's going to be coming out and it gets kind of nasty. But I am OCD, so. <laughs> So what this is, it's the ultimate thread conditioner. It says better than wax. Some people use beeswax and beeswax is 100% natural, but it will not wax that way. It will just add a coating instead of a wax. I don't know exactly what it's made out of. It doesn't say the instructions. It is made in the USA and Illinois. Ooh. That's cool. Uh Crafting a Plan Life was asking if this is the same one that was in the sew sampler that was in the shape of a diamond. No, that is beeswax. Mm -hmm. And beeswax is, um, I could show you how to use beeswax too, but we'd have to go get some. I don't even know if we have any. Um, we're making some for Lori Holt though, so we'll have some soon. Maybe I'll just show you then. Um, and can both of these be used for floss and sewing thread? Yes. So I use it on binding always. On cross stitch, I use it sometimes, sometimes I don't. Just kind of depends what kind of mood I'm in. Mm -hmm. But uh, on binding, it works really good. On that, 50, I use 50 weight Aurifil when I do binding and I use that. Justine Woodard had a very cool question, I think. Uh, she says, what is Kimberly's favorite cross-stitch outfit, or does she just wear her normal live stream clothes? Pajamas. Pajamas. So yesterday when I got to my mom's house, like when I get home at night, I just put my pajamas on. Mm -hmm. But I was at my mom's house, and I was like, should I just put my pajamas on? Or <laughs> that's my mom's going to think I'm weird. Oh. So, um... But I had to actually had to go pick up Emma. I had to meet Kevin in the middle to pick up Emma because she wanted to spend the night. So, um, but yeah, usually pajamas or a t-shirt and just lazy pants. Mm -hmm. I do need to get some new shirts. My stuff is, some of my shirts, I ruined one of them. I poured tea on it and I couldn't get the stain out. Mm. I used the Tide pin and then I used OxyClean. I couldn't get it out and I was like, okay, that's a goner. But it was like all over the t shirt. It wasn't like a little bit. So, mm -hmm. but I do, I will tell you a little secret. So I'm staying at my mom's. I don't have enough, I had to do laundry this morning. I don't have enough pajamas, bras, panties, none of that because I wash clothes so often at home that I don't have anything extra. Oh. <laughs> so if I'm staying a week, so I put it in there. So hopefully, mm -hmm. so when I get home, the first thing I'll have to do is put it in the dryer. Mm. Uh, she was also asking what I wear and what Denise wears when we're stitching. Denise, what do you wear? <laughs> what do you wear? Nike shorts and a t-shirt. Um, I don't stitch, uh, cross stitch, but when I sew, I have these rompers from Target that are super roomy and comfy. I'm actually wearing one right now. You are? Yeah. Sorry. I didn't know they sold those at Target. They're super comfy. Yeah. It's like cotton. Yeah, it's all cotton. Um, they're super stretchy. Um, yes, highly recommend. I've already bought like three colors of them from Target, and my boyfriend makes one of me. I don't think I've been in a Target in months, so I guess I wouldn't even know. Uh, I do a lot of curbside there. Oh, or that's like, what my nanny does. Yeah, because if you order on the app, you can do like the pickup where they bring it to your car. I haven't tried that yet. That's good. I I've... Um, I haven't done that quite yet, uh, but I've saved a lot. I was telling you, I've saved so much money mm -hmm. during quarantine, but then we spent it all on the air conditioner that broke. So oh. I was like, okay, there we went. Yeah. There we go. From Sarah Shear, what would be a good 14 count Ada for a glitter village? Thank you. I don't know. Um, whoa, glitter village. Um, I actually haven't picked my fabric for Glitter Village, so that's, um, I might use 16 or 14 counts, so we'll see. 
what I come up with and then you can because I'm not going to use 20 I'm not going to use linen or 25 count so whatever I come up with we'll 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 show you I'm planning on that in 2021 though we have something planned for next year but yeah I haven't picked um I haven't picked my fabric but I'm definitely using an Ada I don't know what size Ada but I'm definitely using Ada Uh, Lori Holt said she uses 100% beeswax, and then she put a little bee emoji. It's very cute. Yeah, she uses beeswax, and we have one coming out that's super cute that we're making for her. Okay, and DL Starley was saying the beeswax in the So Sampler box smells like honey. It I is. was worried about using it on thread. No, it's 100% um, beeswax. That's why it smells like honey. It's real mm -hmm. honey. It will not. It's the only thing ever proven that will not disintegrate. So it has been found in like Pharaoh's tombs, 100% intact. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I don't know. You could Google that. I like to look at that kind of history stuff. But it's pretty interesting. If you if you Google like, fa bless you, Pharaoh you. tomb beeswax, you got some good images. Interesting. Yeah, it doesn't have any of like the sugar and stuff. So it's. 100% natural, I yeah. guess, is what you would... Yeah. Yeah, natural. It doesn't have anything that's going to degrade it. <laughs> Crafting and Plan Life said, is anyone stitching along, or are we all just watching in awe of Kimberly? I know I'm in awe. Well, I hope that y'all are stitching, because I think it's weird that anybody's watching me do this. Aww. I don't I, know. I think I, it's soothing. You do? Mm -hmm. I, I'm not going very fast. I'm enjoying it. But I know if I went really fast that I would pull everything out. Like, I would have to pull everything out from... I feel like this white is definitely um, twisting a lot. Deborah Bird, Bird's Blessing, said, Is there any videos on YouTube, on Pack Quarter Shop YouTube, that show hand embroidery? And if not, would you do a beginner series? For embroidery we have not done embroidery maybe we'll have a guest come and do embroidery mm. uh, maybe we could have minky kim come back and do embroidery when the world comes back to normal i do not embroider mm. i don't enjoy embroidery it's too mm. free form and too um it's too it's too artistic for my ocd-ness mm. so um but i think it's beautiful i feel like we've had some embroidery related stuff but it's not been like oh this is an embroidery video yeah i don't think it's like a full how-to that i can yeah. think of but um along the same lines bex from texas said do you think you all would ever consider selling embroidery patterns or kits probably not right now yeah. but maybe in the future mm. i mean right now we're expanding like our thread line okay. um um we did have um, some like, uh, we had a video with Lori Holt, a couple of them, I think, where she does embroidery basics like backstitch, uh, satin stitch, uh, lazy daisy, French knot, long stitch. We have like a four part series on our quilting channel with that. We do have a lot of embroidery books. I wouldn't say a lot, but like Yoko mm -hmm. and Minky Kim, we always have theirs. Yes, oh, I love Minky Kim's stuff. Oh my gosh, she's amazing. Her bags, every time I see one of her bags on um, Facebook, I'm like, oh my gosh, I wanna make it. And then I'm like, yeah, no, I'm not making a bag. <laughs> Stitching with the sisterly said, you do embroidery, cross stitch is an embroidery stitch. I do one embroidery stitch then. <laughs> and then I do back stitch when I have to. And Smyrna's. Oh, I do Smyrna's. Yeah, I can yeah, do those. There you go. That's those sweet. are good. Those are, but they go in the same hole. Like that's good. As long as it's on a, as long as I have holes, I'm good. If I don't have holes and I just have a fabric, that's not good. Uh, from Dawn Marie Fahey, any plans to make your PDF pattern keeper accessible? Oh, um, we don't really understand that. We like researched it and there's like it, I don't know how, I don't know how to answer. 
It's only for Android. Oh. Right? Okay. So it's an Android only thing. Yeah, I think. Okay. Yeah, so. Okay. But okay. it's not something we're controlling. Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay. Yeah, it's got it. It's, it's not in our hands. Yeah, I don't. Um, so see how I keep pulling out all this stuff because it's um, messy. So that means what I'm going to do is do the stitch and then finish. That just means that it's just not me. It's not my friend right now. That's what we told. That's what my son Peyton says. You're not my friend because he's real funny. Aww. And so if he's mad at me, he'll say, you're not my friend. Uh, also, it is 11-11 here in Texas, and I like to make a wish every 11-11 that I catch. So everyone make a wish. Okay, I'll make a wish. Um, from Lisa LePage, does it matter if my exes are going the other way? No, but you just want all your exes to go the same way. So if all of yours go to the left, on the top, you want all of them to go that way. So whichever way you do your ex, just do it the same way throughout. From Elizabeth Gregory Chronister, on the website for Welcome to the Forest has a different border than on FQS. Will you be getting the other border? What? Let, let, us, let us check. I don't uh, think well, that's right. Welcome to the Forest has a different border than on FQS. So if you go to Country Cottage Needleworks and then you, um, there's like a tab and it'll say uh, Welcome to the Forest at the top. And if you click into that, that is the free layout. And it's on countrycottageneedleworks.com. And then you just do backslash welcome to the forest. And um, that is your layout there. And it's free and it's on her website. So that's if you want to make it into one big piece versus the small piece. One versus individual, I guess. Okay. Okay, from Debbie Long, people asked if you stitch across one way and then back, and then you said no. What would happen if we do? No, I do do that. I um, do that all the time. It's just if I'm doing small pieces, yes. I'm not going to do that. So, yes, I do it all the time. Um, can you hand me a piece from over there? And I'll just. But I am going to do it on the house in a little bit. But I'll show you like a piece that I have done and. Yeah, you can you can do whatever you want to do. <laughs> Hand me that one. Okay, thanks. So like on this, this one I did across, so I did like rows. So this I did rows and then back across and the stocking I did rows and back across. It's just these are really small, um, we're doing smaller things so that's why you're not seeing rows but usually I do do rows horizontally. But you know like I said you can do whatever you want to do, you don't have to do it the way I do it. Because mm -hmm. I think it's good to do whatever. I think it's good for everybody to have their own way. From D.L. Starley, how far out do you have cross-stitch and quilting projects planned trying to start ye old crow sampler by heart and hand but watching stitching? Um, I have everything planned through December. Whoa. For quilting and for cross-stitch. Virginia Bovier says, this live stream is just awesome. Oh, thanks. Thanks, Virginia. Also, I think I always say your last name, Bovier, but it's Bovier? Let or Bouvier. Or Bouvier? It's like maybe from the, there's like that movie out there. It's about, oh. you know, Bouvier. That's like the name of uh, Jacqueline Kennedy's last name. And then they had the, okay, there's a documentary out there. Oh my gosh. I just watched it, but it's like somebody who descended from that family. Oh my gosh, it's so good. Oh, okay. But yeah, they kind of had like a mental break. Oh, okay. 
Oh, yes. Feel free to let me know which pronunciation Peach knows, is correct. Well, Peach knows what movie I'm talking about because she told me to watch it and I watched it. But I think it's Bouvier. That's what I think it is, but I don't know. I think that's how they would say Jacqueline's name before she married. From Sally Dixon, can you, can you tell if thread conditioner has helped or does thread stitch or does the thread stitch better? I think the, str the thread is definitely smoother, but it is sticky on top. So if you have a dog that sheds, you're going to get dog hair stuck to it. Like it'll be stickier. So I stitch both ways. Um, but like right now, if I just wanted to go smoother, I could just take this and just put the needle in it and it's going to give it a little bit of smoothness. But it's not something, I mean, I, I like it, but I don't. Like if I don't have it there, it's not a big deal. So I use it maybe 20% of the time, I guess. For a while I was using it all of the time and then it kind of got messy and I, I didn't want to mess with, I didn't want to mess with the mess. Grey Gardens? Yes. Oh, you've got to watch it. I've, Lily. I've seen that documentary. I love it. <laughs> I love it. I've always wanted to watch because they made a movie about, like, just, you know, a biopic style movie about it later. I haven't seen that. Yeah, no, that was, yeah, that, yeah. But I watched it recently, and I think that, you know, they say that name a lot because it's her cousin. Mm hmm. Okay, yeah, you're right. But that doesn't mean that I'm saying the name right. I'm just. <laughs> Okay, I'm going to try to hurry. You're good. Uh, from Gwen Smith, uh, she's asking if you can talk about backstitch and why you would do it. You backstitch to accent things. I, um, when people, like, I prefer to do pieces that have zero backstitch and zero French knot and zero colonial knot. Um, you, but you back, backstitch to accent, so that's why you backstitch. But I, I don't, I don't like to. Like I did the Snow Village. It took me like four hours or five. It took a long time, and then I pulled a bunch of it out and thought, yeah, we don't need it. it you don't need it. <laughs> and even when I took it to the framer on Saturday, I was like, oh, I saw like a backstitch that I didn't like the way it looked. I feel like it can also. It's too. Um, it's too loosey goosey for me. From Joyful Stitching, hi, I just got my first stitch fix in the mail yesterday. Can I post pics on Instagram to share? I think she means floss fix? Mm -hmm. Yes, you can. Yes. Stitch fix is the clothing one that is not on us. <laughs> I was like, what is that, Lily? I don't know. Yeah, I get stitch fix. But not you do? Fix. Yeah, I started it. Do you like it? Yeah, I do actually. I at least the this first time they, they did a great job so we'll, we'll see how it goes um, from Lori Yu how is Kimberly threading her needle looks like she folds the thread yeah I'll show you I do I kind of pinch it mm -hmm. would be the word I use and with the Pat Carson needles they have like a little bit bigger eye so it's easier to stick easier to thread so see how it's doing that that drives me crazy so I will um, run my needle just through it and then re-thread so to thread I kind of move my needle right here pinch because it creates kind of a crease I guess and then I go like this I have to do it with my and I just do that oh. Lily's changing the battery yeah but we're not on this camera so it's okay okay
Yeah, I think it's really cute how uh, our front camera, when it runs out of battery, it gives me a sign that says battery exhausted. Exhausted. Yeah, and instead of like, oh, like battery dead, it's just like it's tired. <laughs> like, it needs to rest for a little bit. It's done with us. That's what I want. I want to be Kimberly exhausted so I can take a nap. Oh. That's what I'm excited about. I'm go- at my mom's house. Sh- oh my gosh. I'm going to be like Saturday. I'm going to be like, can I take a nap for like three hours? Can you take a nap at the same time so I can t- take a nap? Yeah. Because it'll be cool. Co- well, I mean, two of my kids are there with me, but mm-hmm. two of my kids cannot sleep without me. They're like attached to me at the hip. And I, because when, when we found out I was going to stay there, I went home and I gave all my kids an option. Because I said, y'all can stay home during the day, and then at night, you can come to Mama's. Do you want to come, or do you want to stay? And they kind of looked at me like, we're not going over there. Because they will not go anywhere because of COVID. Mm -hmm. They will not leave. They will not. They will not, so. But school starts next week, so. That's why I want to go home Sunday, so I can get everything. We have to make the, well, it's all online for three weeks, so we got to make the state, we're going to make stations. Oh. So that they can be separated, you know, a little bit, because they can't all four be mm-hmm. at the same spot. So we kind of have to set up all this stuff. Oh, my goodness. I'm almost to the bottom. I have really not got very far. I'm sorry. Okay, so see, that's a mess. Okay, that's not acceptable. Oh, hang on. There we go. Okay, so see that? That is not, uh-uh, no. That is funk. So... That I'm going to fix by pulling this taut. This is what I just drugged through the back. I'm going to do my nail and I'm going to pull it. I'm going to pull that. And it's pretty now. And then I'll clip it a little bit closer. And so you can see, I didn't zigzag my edges. Well, I don't have a zigzag machine here or a sewing machine that zigzags right here. And I just cut this this morning, but um, you can see that it's not, I mean, it's not really fraying off. If you're working on something forever though, I would would zigzag the edge like I did on Snow Village, but usually, usually I don't. Okay, so on this one, I will do the thread magic again and I'll do it like I normally would. So you can see where I went through before. You just go opposite. And you just pull it through. And then when you touch your thread, you can fill it. So if you want to do that a couple times, it'll smooth it out. It's kind of one of those just, it's optional, it's nice to have. It's definitely not a necessity. Um, well, for binding, I would say it is, but for cross stitch it's kind of like oh this is fun to have and it can make things go faster but it's definitely not um if you're on a budget or you're saving money don't buy it just buy it if you're let me count where i'm at one two three four five six okay almost done with my circle and hoping we're going to cross our fingers that it meets up and if it doesn't i'll just show you how I pull my stitches up but I am trying to hurry we might not be able to finish the whole thing because I don't even know how many people are still watching oh we still got a lot of people Faye Dixon was asking what causes the funk is it thread tension when you're talking about how it turned out funk Oh, it was the um, thread. It did not look, one was bumpier than the other. It just looked messy. Messy was my, it just looked messy. Like, I like all the stitches to lie really flat. And it's really silly because when you put this out on a table, nobody's gonna look at it that detailed. But that's just kind of the nature of my personality. Uh, From Stacy Page. This is probably a stupid question, but would using lotion be good a good idea instead of thread conditioner? No, no, no. <laughs> she no, said, no. clearly I'm new to this. No, no, no. Yes, no, no lotion. No lotion. Lotion on your hands would be good. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And they do make some lotion. Um, 
that's really good for stitchers and the only reason we don't stock it is because you can buy it at Walmart much cheaper and so um, I can't even think of the name of it but you can just get it cheaper other places but it's great for cross stitch like you can just type cross stitch no lotion and that's for your hands but it's just one of those things where if you can get it cheaper somewhere else for a really big discount I don't like to carry it because then people feel like I'm trying to overcharge when I'm not but you can't really like you can't compete with Walmart's pricing Uh, KT Mackinac said, please let Kimberly know that the batteries in the Vivilux clip-on lights are replaceable. And if you wanted help figuring it out, she can email you photos on how to do it. Okay, thanks. From Patricia Colon, do you prefer in hand rather than hoop or scroll? I can't, I just can't manage hoop or scrolls. Yes, because, um, now that I'm stitching so many things and going, um, I just need everything to fit in my car and in a bag. And so having the Q-snap was kind of just taking up too much space. But I think it's whatever, you know, whatever you feel most comfortable doing. I would definitely, if you're using a Q-snap, I would leave it off, like take it off in between when you're not working on it. From Sandra Carrillo, hello Kimberly and Lily and other staff. Thank you for today's live stream. Watching Kimberly has given me the confidence to start cross stitching. I have been procrastinating, procrastinating because I felt insecure. Aww. Yeah, no, you should just do it. Yay. It's easy. Aww. Oh, and then uh, Princess P said, me too, haven't done this for 30 years. I used to do it and yeah, it kind of went out of style and now it's back in style. Mm -hmm. I feel like a lot of crafts are really making a comeback. Mm -hmm. Tie dye. It's like, Ooh, yes. Oh my goodness. I saw like my, I like to watch Sebastian Maniscato. He's very funny uh -huh. and he does a video at night and it's, it's called, it's a series that he started and it's called, what did my wife buy from Amazon today? Oh. And last night he like opened the bag and it was like all tie dye and like tie dye shirts and there were bags and he's like, what are these bags for? And I'm like, she's probably going to tie dye them with your kids. Yeah. Oh, it's so funny. That's I think awesome. he's hilarious. Um, <laughs> do you know who he is? Uh, he's, no. He's like just an, he's Italian uh -huh. and he's, oh, he's so funny. It's all clean comedy. He's just hilarious. Uh huh. But he talks about like, I don't know, stuff I can relate to. Mm-hmm. So I watched that last night. I was like almost peeing in my pants because it was so funny. <laughs> I just think he's funny. But mm -hmm. From Margaret Reedy, when you do the zigzag, zigzag stitch on a regular sewing machine, what width and length do you make it? I just make it longer, whatever. I just hit to the longest settings. Mm -hmm. Okay, now I'm gonna count between here to make sure I've got the right number of stitches. So it should be 15. Ooh, maybe not. Yes, it worked. Okay, Yay. so I think what should I do? I'll do the, I'll just do a little bit of the house okay. and then we can stop. Okay. Yeah. We're two and a half hours in right now. Okay. Let me do the bottom of the house so I can show you my rows that I actually do do rows that y'all, so y'all can believe that I do rows. <laughs> and then obviously I'll show you, um, next week it'll be finished and then watch our video on how to do the back. It was fun to do the back. It was, um, not as hard as I thought. And we used uh, our stitchery tape. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the finishing, finishing tape. tape. Yeah, it's all finishing. finishing tape. So we used finishing tape, and it's not coming off. And that was the number one question on the videos was, um, why didn't you use a hot glue gun? Mm -hmm. And I said, me and hot glue guns are not friends. <laughs> That's what I say. I don't know. That's what I say instead of I don't like something. I don't want to say I don't like because don't. Don't is a negative word, so I'm like, me and 
Hot glue guns. We're not friends. I said I'm scared of this. Burn myself. You're frenemies. What does that mean? Like friend enemy? Frenemy? Oh. Is that... I don't even know what that... I don't know if I've ever heard that. I think it's usually like a friend that's like actually not nice to you, but you keep them in your inner circle anyway. Oh yeah, I don't have those people. (laughs) But that's Uh, hot glue guns. We gotta gotta keep them in our circle, but we don't necessarily like them. Yeah. (laughs) That's funny. Okay, so I'm gonna do... I'm gonna show you how I do a row and then we'll be done. Mm -hmm. So that you can believe that I do do rows. I really thought I could finish this, but oh my goodness, this would take like three more hours and I don't have three more hours. Cause I gotta eat lunch. I was gonna say, it's almost lunch time. I know, I gotta go, I might have to leave here to go eat somewhere. Mm-hmm. Um, Lane England said, the thread conditioner lid looks like you can slide the thread through with the lid on to prevent the messiness. Okay. Yeah, you can. But it, but okay, you can and I do that. But what happens, it still ekes out. It starts eking out. It just gets gross. Yeah. Just it's trust the me. the nature of the thing. Yeah. So when I do rows, you can go a lot faster. So this is what everybody's asking about, is do I do rows? And I do. And when I do a row, I'll go top to bottom. And I'll show you why I do that in a second. And then I'll show you another trick. So this is supposed to be four, 15 over. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. Okay. So what you could do, say you need to do 100 over or something crazy, and you don't want to count it a million times. What you can do is take an extra needle and let's pretend that we're going to go to here, whatever that number is, 30. And what I would do is if you want to not have to think, say you're watching TV and you've got to count over a whole lot. You can count, put your needle in that little hole that the eight is in, and then count again, and then you can just do it without thinking. So that's like a trick that I use sometimes. Like that's your stopping point? Yeah, that's like my stopping point. And then when I get there, I mean, you can count again, but it just kind of, you don't have to count it as many times. Mm-hmm. Cool. Or, you know, like, I mean, I'm watch, I am watch Netflix all the time. I'm, I just watched a new series. That new, new one came out yesterday about the top most wanted. And I'm watching some of them mm-hmm. twice because they're about drug lords. Oh. And they are, a lot of it's in Spanish. Mm-hmm. So I rewatch it later when I can read the subtitles. Oh, there you go, yeah. Because then I'm, well, because then I, I mean, I don't know, I'm interested in that stuff, so I'm like, oh, I'll watch it a couple times. Mm-hmm. Now, you notice I'm not railroading with the gray because gray does not show flaws as much. Mm-hmm. So I'm not going to railroad because look at that. You can see every flaw over here and you see none here. Mm-hmm. So the darker thread, do not railroad. Black, I will say on black, a lot of people um, don't like the way black looks when they stitch, and I love the way black looks. Okay, so the reason I stitch, when I stitch and I go down, this is the reason. So you're gonna put your thread in here. If I was gonna do the row above, that's the same spot your needle comes out. So instead, if you go down, you just keep going. You don't have to go up and then change the direction of things. So I do try to stitch top down and then left to right. uh, Stacy Page says, does Kimberly prefer cross stitch or quilting more? I think equal. Like right now I have a table runner sitting at home. I was supposed to finish it this weekend and I have got to get it done. Um, And I'm just like itching to get back home just to do it. I'm like, oh, maybe I'll just take a lunch break, go all the way home, finish my tail work. But the reason I haven't starched all the fabric for the back or the border, so, but I'm like, it's killing me that I can't, that I can't go home and finish it. (laughs) So I, both. I think I'm much better at quilting than cross stitch though. I mean, cross stitch, I'm just like a beginner and I probably always will be. Mm -hmm. I'm going to always like Mm -hmm. Ada and quilting. I feel like I can do like fun stuff and hard stuff and what y'all see Friday, oh my gosh, it's going to blow your minds. Ooh. Um, I'm excited. 
but it's a, I'm going to show you 108 blocks that I made. Ooh. I might have pulled I might have pulled my hair out a little bit doing it. I, <laughs> you want to be honest. Uh, fun fact from Bex from Texas: In the old days, they rubbed the needle across their scalp to oil it. That's gross. <laughs> oh no. That's funny. That's so nasty. Mm -hmm. From Cheryl Abraham, what size needle should you use with Ada cloth? Okay, so I use size 26. So between 14 and 28 count, you would use size 26. For 10 count, you would use size 24. And for higher counts, you would use a size 28. And um, so I keep this in my bag and then I just refer to it. And um, you can also Google. Um, and then this, this counter, what you can do, like for example, this is 14 count, and if you didn't know what count your fabric was, you could use this and you put it on there, and if the lines are exactly on your dots, on your cloth, you know you're on 14 count. So if you have something, especially like if you're working with like linen and you don't know, am I on 16 or 18 or, you know, you can, you know, or I don't know if I'm on 25 or 28. This is great. Okay, so I'm going to finish this off. I hope some of y'all stitched with me. I think lots of people were. Uh, comment below if you were stitching with us. Yeah, and then what I'll do here is I'll just put my needle kind of at the top. Let's see. And then to put it in my bag, I usually roll it. So I've already started rolling this way, so I will roll. So I'll just roll it like this. And then um, everything is on my bitty board. And I would just like literally just throw this in my bag. Okay. With all my stuff. Yay, that's Yay. a fun camera. So, okay, so let's see how long we went on my time tracker. It says um, two hours, 34 minutes. So I'm going to write that down mm -hmm. in my little book real quick so I have it. Also, hurry for our longest live stream to date. Woohoo! I thought I was going to finish, though. <laughs> but I didn't. But, okay, so this is how far I got. And... All I have left is the house, the vine, the words, and the top. So happiness is homemade. I hope you can use that as a motto in your house because homemade makes you happy. Mm -hmm. So I'll see you guys next week. Bye, everyone. Thanks for joining us.